I mean, it's a money-making machine, my friend. <laughs> Hey podcast listener, you're about to discover insider tips, tricks and secrets to making more sales and converting more prospects into customers with email marketing. For more information about the email marketing podcast or the autoresponder guy, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Hey everybody, it's John McIntyre here, the autoresponder guy, and it's time for episode 54 of the McMethod Email Marketing Podcast, where you'll discover tactics and strategies to increase your email profits by 25 to 100% in 90 days or less without spending more on advertising. Today, I'll be talking to a friend of mine. His name is Terry Dunlap. Now, I first heard about Terry via email. He replied, well, no, actually, he sent me an email out of the blue. We'd spoken a little bit before. He'd replied to a few of my autoresponder emails, but he emailed me out of the blue, right? He'd been listening to the podcast for the last year. This only happened a month ago. And he sends me an email, and the title is You Effing Rock, okay? Now, well, basically, the gist of his email was that thanks to you, John, thanks to the podcast, in the last, I think it was five months, I've done about $85,000 total in my new business, that's basically what he said. That's about $15,000 a month. And then one of the key things he pointed out in his email that that's almost entirely due to the information that he's learned, that he's discovered in the email marketing podcast. Okay, so this is a bit of a testimonial, but well, let me just say straight out. This is a testimonial that email marketing works. Not just It's not just about the McMethod email marketing podcast or John McIntyre or any of that. Right, That's part of it. But what I really want you to get here today and why I brought Terry along was that I wanted to show you or remind you or demonstrate to you that email marketing works. Okay, If you just keep things simple, what Terry's done is extremely simple. There's nothing complex about it. He doesn't have some crazy email marketing you know, set up with expensive software and funnels and split testing and all this sort of stuff. The great thing about Terry's thing is he's done pretty much all of this with something like, a, I think it's a 10 email sequence and a squeeze page and some paid traffic. That's it, okay? So this does not need to be complicated at all. To get the show notes for this episode of the Email Marketing Podcast, go to themcmethod.com slash 54. Now, got a couple things. First, I have a new segment that I'm going to be doing each week and it's called the McMaster's Inside of the Week. So if you don't know, in case you don't know, McMaster's is a private community that I've created for people who want to learn how to do email marketing the right way. There are premium training products in there that show you step-by-step how I do things and how you can do it in your business and there's a forum too. So what I thought would be really cool is to bring an insight from the forum every week and bring it on the podcast and this one is from David. And David says, create a dashboard of something like three metrics that you track to give you an indication of your business performance. Now, this reminds me of, I think it's Peter Drucker who said, what gets measured gets managed. Okay, so if you're tracking, say, uh, the conversion rate on your opt-in page and you're paying attention to that each day or each week, it's probably going to improve because as you track the conversion rate, you're going to notice things, well, hang on, how about I try this? And then you're going to see it go up and then you try this. Maybe it goes down a bit and you keep doing this. So what you want to find is you want to find one, Dave is saying three, but you see you can do one to three main metrics that you're going to track each month in your business. I think this is a really key insight because if you start doing this, if you track what matters, and in many cases, it's going to be something like for a forum, it might be churn rate or for a recurring service. You're also going to have things like what's your lifetime customer value? How can you bump that up? Okay. And since we're talking email marketing, some of the key metrics are going to be your conversion rate of your opt-in page and the conversion rate of your sales page will be two key leverage points. And once you track them, then you can start making changes to improve them. Now, this is very important. So go and do that. Number two, don't have any reviews today, but if you would like to leave a review and uh, support the show, you know, motivate me to keep doing these episodes, uh, these interviews, go to the iTunes store, search for the McMethod Email Marketing Podcast and leave me a review. I will read it out on the show. And you can even hit me up via email with a question and I will answer your question on the show as well. Now, I got three or I got two listener questions actually <laughs> this week. Question number one is how much genuine support do I give how much genuine support do you give in your methods? So this person's asking a question about McMaster's. How much support do I give in there? And the honest answer is I'm in there every day replying to threads. If you want direct access to me, the best way to do so is to join McMaster's and you'll be able to go through all the training in there. And there's also a forum where you'll be able to ask me questions and get my feedback and get the feedback of other members. That's at themcmethod.com slash McMaster's. Question number two and the final question is what are your thoughts on choosing a niche for beginning copywriters in the freelance scene? I'm torn on this one. Now, so this question refers to my decision to be the 
autoresponder guy, which is my niche, you might say. And so this person's asking, what are my thoughts on how, you know, where you should choose a niche? Should you be the supplement copywriter or the autoresponder guy or the podcast guy or any of these guys? And the answer is yes, but, right? There's always a but. The answer is yes, but, but. It depends on kind of where you're at. If you're just getting started, I think it's more important than focusing on trying to figure out what your niche is. It's more important to focus on figuring out where you're going to be able to add value because it's going to vary from person to person. I didn't set out with the goal of being becoming the autoresponder guy. I just happened to kind of fall into a role where I was ended up writing autoresponders. That was the main thing people were coming to me for. So if you have no experience, you're just getting started, it's more important for you to focus on what opportunities are available to you right now within your network. And if you don't have any, you better go out and start getting some and just start hustling on those opportunities. And over time, if you just keep your mind aware, if you pay attention, you will come up with an idea for positioning, which is where you choose a niche for email marketing or supplements or weight loss or or whatever guy or girl you want to be, okay? So for beginning copywriters in the freelance scene, don't niche down immediately. First, assess the surroundings, work for some people, and then start, as you've done a few jobs and more clients keep coming to you, then start figuring out your niche. That's how I would do it. Cool. That's it for now. Let's go get into this interview with Terry Dunlap. It's John McIntyre here, the autoresponder guy. I'm here with Terry Dunlap. Now, uh, Terry isn't an email marketing expert that you might have heard of. Uh, Terry sent me an email. It must have been, I think, six weeks ago, maybe two months ago, right before I was due for a trip to Sydney to catch up with the family. And this email, I mean, I was reading this. I I remember cracking up when I got at the subject line. You know, he's dropping F-bombs in the subject line. And then throughout his email, it's great, you know, mentioning numbers and talking about his business. And we're going to talk about that today. The reason I got him on was that the results he's gotten, which I'll let him tell the story, Mostly, from what I understand, from just applying what he's learned from the email marketing podcast. So I thought, instead of just uh, just go back and forth with a few emails, why not get him on the podcast and get him to share what he's done, what's worked for him, what he's applied, how he's applied it, all those kind of things. So then you, as the listener, can go away and apply the same in your business and make a whole ton of money, just like Terry. So we'll get into that. Terry, how are you doing today? I'm doing outstanding, man. How are you doing? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. That, that is that is cool. I want to say before we get into the meat of this stuff that you are absolutely right. I am not an email marketer. I have never done any of this stuff before. I have to say that when I listen to your podcast or anybody's podcast about internet business and marketing and things of that nature, when I read reviews, I look for people that have actually implemented this stuff and what the results have been. Yeah. And I thought it was worthwhile for me to come on here and tell your audience just by listening to your podcast, and I subscribe to your emails too, and once I got a feel for how you operate and everything that you and your guests have provided, I implemented and had fantastic results. I mean, it's a money-making machine, my friend. (laughs) Now, 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 we're not talking the likes of, you know, a John McIntyre himself or you know somebody like Amy Porterfield or David Seitman Garland or you know those types of people but it's starting i mean i had to start somewhere i started you know back in october and things are just taking off what i basically did was that i had a physical product okay. that i wanted to sell and it's basically a product now i can describe it here later but the product is tailored to the hacking community yeah so this is a very niche product that hackers love. So I followed your advice, and I basically put up a landing page, and I announced that this product was coming out. I did a very simple Google AdWords campaign because I don't have a blog. I don't have a podcast. Hmm. I'm a nobody, okay, when it comes to this Internet stuff. So the only way I knew to build traffic was to actually start building my list with paid traffic. And so anytime these hackers would look for certain keywords, our ad was the only one that ever popped up. Hmm. And so we're getting people added to the email list. And so while I'm doing this, I'm listening to you. I'm following your emails. I'm listening to what you're, you're giving as advice. And so I start to implement an autoresponder into my campaign as these people join the list. And it's, uh, I think I did like seven, seven or ten autoresponders uh, emails that basically kept people intrigued, gave them tidbits of information, kept them always on the hook at the end, yeah. made it a story. And when it came time to launch, this thing just exploded. So <laughs> just to, let me give you some numbers here, okay? So I actually launched this online live October 1st of just last year. So we're talking six months ago, barely. 
In total sales, $88,312.88. If you break it out, that's roughly fifteen grand a month, my friend, <laughs> from selling a physical product. And, I mean, it's killer. And to be honest, I owe this success to you. <laughs> Seriously, there, there's no doubt about it. And, in fact, the whole autoresponder series thing works. The email marketing works. I've actually now launched a um, completely online training class for people that want to learn how to hack wireless networks. It's, it's a seven-day boot camp class, and I'm doing the exact same thing. I have a landing page up. Hmm. Basically, that says registration is currently closed. If you want to get on the waiting list, you know, you can join. And then as people join the waiting list, they're getting, uh, I'm actually writing the email responder series now, but uh, I've learned from the first set of autoresponders that I created to be a little more enticing with the subject line and to do a little more tease in the content, say, you know, here's something you need to know, but I don't show them the how unless they actually join the boot camp. Okay. Yep. So yep. I give them the information they need, but I don't show them the how unless you join the boot camp. Yeah. So, dude, the shit works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That I mean, just that right there, that, that last bit that you tapped on, which is this tell the what and sell the how. This is such a classic yep. marketing thing. And yeah. it's so simple, but it works. It works. And I think the other thing that I've learned from you too, and I'm applying not only in email marketing, but when I need to communicate with someone I may not have a connection with, like I did with you, I, I had a very intriguing subject line, did I not? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you familiar with Chris Ducker, right? Yeah. Okay. So I listen to his podcast as well. And he gives some really valuable content too. Unfortunately, I'm usually listening to him while I'm driving to yeah. work in the morning. You know, I have to re-listen and then take notes and stuff after the fact. So I sent him an email. And I didn't expect him to actually talk about it on his show. Right. But the subject line of the email I sent to him was, I hate Chris Ducker, exclamation point, and hate in all caps. <laughs> and I told him in the email, I said, you know, I really hate your show. Because it has such valuable content that when I'm listening to it driving, it pisses me off that I can't write anything down because I'm driving. Uh, uh, uh. So he even admitted that he was hesitant on actually opening and reading the contents of that email based on the subject line. But it got his attention and it got a mention on his show, which I never intended. Uh, so this is great. I love this. So you, <laughs> so Dude, you reply to your email. Your, your stuff works. It, it, it is the subject line. And it is the content, the hook, you get them, and like you said, give them the what, where, when, but not the how. Okay. And make okay. them, if they want the how, they can pay for it. Okay, so let me back up. Let's just recap a little bit. You've got this product for wireless networks. This is the Reva Systems, right? The original product. Yeah. And yep. you set up a Google Ads, like a Google AdWords campaign, basically, to yep. people who were searching for terms related to this. You drove them to a landing page, which offered them something. What did it yes. offer them, by the way? It actually didn't offer them anything. I wasn't giving anything away. Okay. It was basically a description of what the product was and that we were going to be launching soon. And if you wanted to get in on special pricing and be one of the first people to get your hands on this limited release edition, mm -hmm. add your name to the email list. Ah, uh, okay. So a bit of suspense. And then they join the email list. And what do you do from there? What were you doing with email one? Was there anything special going email on? Email one... Some of your, your listeners in the States who are tech savvy might know of this conference. Have you ever heard of DEF CON? I have, but that's an electro dance music festival in Sydney. But I'm, oh, you're not okay. Yeah, about no, that it's not that DEF CON. There's, <laughs> in, every, every, every year in the U.S. out in Las Vegas, there's a hacker conference. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, the first one is Black Hat, which is where all your professional security pen testers and stuff show up at. Yeah. And then after that is where all your, you know, hardcore hackers show up, you know, the, the people that are wearing their black and white and their piercings and all that kind of stuff and show up and hang out at the scene. And there's talks about hacking the latest and great, you know, GSM phones and hacking Android devices and television sets and all that kind of stuff. So some of our people actually go out there and either give talks or we have a booth and talk about, you know, what our company does. But there was a rumor but before we launched this, that someone had said, hey, I heard that there's a new Reaver Pro coming out. Because prior to this physical product, all it was was a software download yeah. that we had for some of our customers. So we started getting a brand new target audience out of DEF CON. 
And when they started signing up on the mailing list, the very first email that went out was simply titled rumors. And I'll quickly run through this real quick. I'll read the first one. Okay. So you open up the email entitled rumors, and it says, and it begins this way. Many of you have emailed me asking if rumors are true. Is it true that a Reaver, new Reaver Pro was seen at DEF CON last week? Well, I don't know. I wasn't there, so I can't speak about what was or was not at DEF CON. But what I do know is that our guys in the lab have been hacking up some Reaver Pro goodness all summer long. It's a tasty treat that is cooking to near perfection. I can't go into many details now simply because I let our hackers do whatever they want when they want. Our deal is this. Partners don't ask questions, and the hackers in the lab will crank out awesome stuff. Think I'm joking? Then see what happens when I leave Craig Hefner to do what he wants to do. Here's his talk at Black Hat last week. And it's a link to his actual talk that he gave, how he actually hacks IP cameras Hollywood style, where he can literally take over an IP camera. So what's an IP camera? An internet camera, like even security cameras. Yeah. Like a lot of corporations have security cameras to monitor the perimeter yep. or even like nanny cams or something like that. Our guy had discovered a way to hack these things and presented a talk at DEF CON. Okay. And so what he did on stage was, you know, he'd go through his whole technical talk of how to do this. And then the demo was he'd set like a, a can of beer in front of the camera that was supposed to be protecting and monitoring this can of beer. Then he does his hack. The frame freezes, and then he can take the physical can away, but yet to uh, you and me, yep. it looks like it's still there. Yep, yep, yep. So that was the first email that went out. The second email that went out basically started enticing people about what the new features are going to be, and it was simply titled Black Box. And I said, where do I start? Let's start with one of the coolest new features of Reaver Pro. Man, is this cool. Once we find the WPA passphrase of the target network, Reaver Pro will automatically connect to the network and then email you the passphrase and keys to an email account that you configure ahead of time. Consider my mind blown. Is that cool or what? This is the style yeah. that I have. And then I have an unboxing video where I actually talk about, hey, I, we just got the master copy from the manufacturer. Here's what it looks like. Yeah. And then actually put a YouTube video up there for that. And then how to actually use it. Pre-orders haven't even started yet. Mm. So I'm getting people, here's what it looks like. Here's what it can do. Here's all the cool stuff that, can, yeah, that yeah. you can do with this. And then finally, I open it up for pre-orders. And then I announce to people that it's actually shipping. And using the landing page, in the email autoresponder series, I think we ended up prior to launch with about a thousand plus emails on the list. And I'd say probably 20% of those actually ordered during the pre order. And now it's getting to the point where it's actually, I mean, it's self sustaining. I don't have to, there's no more mailing list to join. Yeah. The word has gotten out. People have written blog reviews about it, people have posted their YouTube reviews about it. Now it's just organic. I don't have to run the ads anymore. Yeah. And uh, we're selling probably anywhere on the low side five to as many as 15 of these a day at 70 bucks a pop. Damn. Okay, so you've got this basically a, it's like a product launch sequence in this site. So if someone goes there now... You just buy it. Oh, okay. okay. You, just, you just click the buy button. So the, the whole launch sequence for this particular product is done. Now I'm working on the one for our Wi-Fi boot camp class where I teach you as an end user, how you can use a very basic Linux operating system distribution on your laptop and with built-in tools, be able to sniff wireless networks, collect packets, look for usernames and passwords on those networks, yeah. and how to create what's called a man-in-the-middle rogue access point, where <laughs> if you're in a hotel yeah. that says like, you know, Hilton Honors or whatever is the AP name, yeah. I teach you how to create that exact same setup so people think they're connecting to the hotel, but they connect to you, and you sniff all their traffic on your laptop as you tether it to your phone or mobile device for an actual internet connection. <laughs> so that's called the TNS 7-Day Wi-Fi Boot Camp, and that is, registration is currently closed. Yeah. And so we're adding people to the mailing list there, and I'm working on that email sequence right now for the autoresponders. But I didn't wait to get my autoresponder done, because the most important thing I think you can do now hmm. is start collecting the email addresses. Correct, correct. Don't wait. If you have an idea, you think you got something that the market wants, number one, put up a landing page. 
Number two, if you don't have an email list, you don't have a blog, you don't have a podcast, you don't have a YouTube channel, then I think the easiest and fastest way is to set up a Google AdWords account. Okay. Figure out what keywords you need and then run it for seven days and see what happens and see if you get people adding names to your email list. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing with the boot camp. We're getting people adding names to the list and it seems to be working out. And let me give you a a quick rundown of some of the subject lines that I'm going to use for the boot camp sequence. I got uh, 10 emails here. I got half of them fleshed out already. Okay. So the subject line one, of course, is welcome to the list. And that's pretty generic. Second one is I don't do Windows. Basically, the gist of that email is in this course, we don't use the Windows operating system. We use the Linux operating system. Yeah. And then the next one is pick the right wireless card because people that are in this community that do wireless penetration testing, wireless hacking, they're all fixated on one particular brand card that's out there. It's very popular. And I dispel the myth that this is not the card you think it, you should be using. Okay. There's a couple open source tools that people use uh, called Aircrack and Kismet. So in this next email, the subject line says, but I already use Aircrack and Kismet. And I basically dispel the myth that, hey, they're good tools, but you really should know how how they work under the hood because the next email subject line explains why you need to know that. And this subject line is called when the excrement hits the oscillator, when the shit hits the fan. (laughs) Okay. All right. And that basically talks about a story where I was actually out in the field doing a penetration test one time against a client I didn't have an internet connection, and my tools shit the bed. And I basically needed to open up a terminal, get on the command line, and figure out how to do all this stuff just with a black and white terminal. No GUIs, nothing. So understanding what you learn in the boot camp will help you when the shit hits the fan. Then there's one called, hey, where's the easy button? That talks about a story where I was teaching a class, and they saw the power of working on the command line, but then they wanted to know, can't we create you know, a GUI, an easy button? And I talk about the pros and cons of that. Hmm. And then there's one called How Fast Can You Hop? And there's a concept in the wireless world that when you're monitoring wireless networks, you need to channel hop. And once I show you how to do this, it's a piece of cake. Okay. Next one is Do You Have a Big or Little Pipe? And that one basically talks about, you know, when you're actually collecting the packets, how much space do you have to store it and basically more efficient ways to store the data that you're collecting. And then the final email in the series is How to Have Fun at Starbucks which it basically goes into the detail of how you can set up a rogue access point in Starbucks, mimic the Starbucks access point, have people that come in that are sipping on their cappuccinos and lattes connect to you instead of the Starbucks network. So that's the series for this particular funnel. So I'm on the site right now, and so what it looks like you're doing is you're just going through each module of this course or each day, and you're creating yes. an email or two around it that's really just yes. pre-selling that, and then you're going to link to, say, I'm guessing a sales page where they can sign up and actually purchase the course when it's ready. Yeah, now what I do is uh, if you're on the boot camp page, you should see where it says that its uh, registration is closed, add your name to the waiting list at the very top. Yeah. So what we'll do is as people add their name, they will basically get this email series, which you're right, it corresponds to each of the particular modules. I will tell the what, where, when, why, but not the how. Yeah. And then I'm going to announce, date yet to be determined, when I'm going to have a webinar. And the webinar is going to be one hour long, so everybody on the mailing list can come and see exactly what the program's all about. I go into a lot more detail. I provide more specific links to open source resources. And basically, it ends by saying, when you leave this webinar, I have literally given you everything that you need to do what I teach you in the boot camp. You have two choices now. You can take the information I gave you and by trial and error, figure it out on your own. It's going to be slow, but you'll figure it out, and you'll probably be better educated for it. Or if you want to learn it quickly, you want your hand held, you want a step-by-step, seven-day process to take you from zero to hero, then join the boot camp. But I've given you everything, the links, the sources, the web pages, and all that stuff to go learn this all on your own. Or you can join the boot camp, and I can teach it to you in seven days. I, I just reckon this is the thing that's so badass about this is you've done one thing that's worked with email marketing you're like alright what's the next thing now I'm going to do this yep. seven day boot camp and it sounds like I can hear it in your voice you were so excited about it about what, <laughs> Dude, yeah. email marketing, what the whole thing's going to do I'm thinking like you've probably got what 10 how many ideas have you got that you think you could roll out over the next I mean if you had all the time in the world Oh, Jesus. I'd have to go get my book. I have pages. I literally have pages of shit that I want to do. I just don't have enough time in the day. And if you listen to Chris Ducker, 
His solution is hire all these goddamn VAs. I I can't manage that many people. (laughs) Now, I can give you guys some little backstory here. Reaver Pro, the the company, Reaver Systems, is actually a subsidiary of my larger company, which is actually a government contracting company here in the United States. Okay. So we cater a lot of our reverse engineering skills and our hacking skills to the military and the intelligence community. But we wanted this to be completely separate. Yep. And so my partners and I said, OK, if you want this to be completely separate from this other business, that's fine, because it's a completely different clientele, completely different mentality, completely different skill set to market to these people. Because I remember when I joined your email list yeah. and in your very first email, it says, hey, what's your problem? Reply to this email and let me know what it is. And I sent you a very detailed explanation that we deal with the intelligence community and trying to get these people to you know, get in touch in front of the right people is painful. And of course, I mean, I didn't expect you to have an answer, but yeah. I mean, this is a completely different market. So we made the decision, hey, let's spin off the Reaver product, create a, a company just around that. And then Terry, you figure out how to market it. You figure out how to sell it. Mm. And that's pretty much what I've been doing. And it's, you know, thanks to you, John, and all your guests and everybody you've had on. I mean, I've been able to take bits and pieces and adapt it and the shit's working. <laughs> So one thing to be cool to touch on is what were some of like the key, you know, light bulb moments or, you know, the things you're like, oh, that's how it works. What were some of those, you know, maybe challenges that you had and then you listened to a podcast where you figured something out and it, was like, and it clicked for you. I think the biggest challenge I had was finding a, an email provider that had an easy to use autoresponder series. Okay. I started off with constant contact. What a pain in the ass that system was. Yeah. I dropped it after you know a while. And I, on a side note, it's funny because they followed up with me with a phone call and said, hey, why'd you cancel? You know, If you give us some feedback, you know, we'll send you like a $100 gift card. It's like, okay, fine. And I laid it on the line, man. I was like, no holds barred. And they were at the very end. They said, wow, that's pretty brutal. But <laughs> hey, thanks for your honesty. We wish everybody would give feedback like that. <laughs> so then I went to a campaign monitor, yeah. which, I, which was my very first autoresponder series that I implemented successfully. Let me, let me back up a, a second here. It dawned on me about the whole autoresponder series when I first prototyped the boot camp almost a year ago. And what I had done was basically made some very short how-to videos, basically along the same content that you see on the website there in, in the seven different modules. Hmm. But they were just like private YouTube videos. And I had some beta testers that I wanted to use. And I used Campaign Monitor and their autoresponder series. And the idea came from Chris Ducker, where he had uh, his new business boot camp series. You join his email list and he sends you like three or four yeah. you know, things about how to start your online business. It's like, I like that idea. I'm going to steal that idea. Yeah. And I'm going to do it for this, you know, how to do Wi-Fi collect and Wi-Fi hacking with my beta group. Yeah. And so I would just send out an email in an autoresponder series every 24 hours that linked to the next video. Hmm. And these guys loved it. And it's like, wow, this is awesome. But I didn't want to do it just strictly delivering videos via email. I wanted to set up a membership site where people could, you know, join and interact and I could have live office hours and, and actually talk to these people. So I think it was... The combination of listening to your methodology and following the examples in your email letters and combined with the boot camp concept that Chris Ducker uses over on his site, when those two just combined, it was like, wow, I could actually do this with anything. And then the fact that it actually worked (laughs) and made money with a physical (laughs) product with a bunch of hackers around the globe. Dude, I'm shipping these things everywhere. I mean, you name a country, I've shipped it. And it's like, wow, okay. So, you know, I did the beta test. That seemed to work. The beta testers loved it. I did it for real with the physical product and we're making money. And now we're doing it with, uh, or I'm getting ready to do it with the boot camp. But like I said, if you join the wait list now, you're not going to get the autoresponder series because I'm still working on it. It's just, you know, quick little sentences because my first responder series was like paragraphs of stuff as I was reading it to you. But now they're like short, quick jabs, just like your emails. Yeah, yeah. I think that's people, by the way, I just signed up to your list. I want to see your emails when they come out. This is one of the things that a lot of people get mixed up with. They think they need to be some copywriter to write a good email. But you're not a copywriter. You're a hacker. I read that article yeah. that you sent me before we uh, got on the phone, which would be yeah. kind of a bit of fun to talk about. But you don't have to be a writer. You just have to get on there. Yeah. And basically, it's like you're having a conversation with a buddy at the bar. You, you know, you're three or four beers in and you just talk. Yes, and it works. 
It works, and I cannot envision a scenario where it wouldn't work. Now, I haven't used an autoresponder series with other CEOs and stuff of other you know major companies or anything like that. But yeah. I, I mean, if I've given the opportunity, of course, hell, I'm going to try it because I mean, you don't know if it's going to work unless you try it. Right. And so far, it's been working for me, and I can't complain. So you've been <laughs> badass, dude. I mean, you deserve it, man. You you got on <laughs> driving, driving the traffic. You executed, man. You know that's true. That is, I think. I personally think a lot of problem that people have when when they're trying to start the business, because there's so many different ways you can go. To be honest with you, in order for me to concentrate and actually execute, like you said, that, that I think that's the problem. A lot of people have intentions to do this, good intentions. They want to do it. But for some reason, they get bogged down at the execution phase. I'll tell you right now, one of the things I had to do to concentrate is I had to get off of people's email yeah. lists that I was on just so I could concentrate. Yeah. And so, I mean, to be honest... I basically have my podcast down to like you, Chris Ducker, and the guys that do like the business growth podcast or something like that. That's it. I mean, otherwise, you're just overwhelmed. You are just overwhelmed. You don't know where to start. This guy says to do this. This guy says to do that. You need to focus. Just get rid of the extraneous background noise. Find the people that you seem to relate to, like I did with you, and just listen to you. And listen to Chris Ducker and one other one. And that's it. And then implement yeah. And I'll tell you, the biggest thing that I think helped me execute on this was I actually sat in my garage one day on a nice warm day yeah. with a microbrew beer, and I sketched out on a pad of paper what modules do I think I need to cover, how long do I think it's going to take me to create, and then broke out a calendar and started putting dates on a calendar, and then held myself accountable to make sure everything got done by these certain days. All from a simple autoresponder. What did you have, like seven emails, ten emails in there? Yeah, seven, seven. And this next one that I'm working on is 10. But, you know, like I said, I only have the bodies of like the first four or five already flushed out. And then I go back and change them. I try and tighten them up. And But I'm, I'm listening to people like you and others talking about, hey, you know, go read the classic copywriting books, yeah. you know, the Gary Halberts of the world and in scientific advertising. So, you know, I grab this stuff and I download it on my Kindle and read it when I can. Yeah. You read it, and it's like, wow, this shit hasn't changed in, in decades. Exactly. It's the same concept, <laughs> except the, the, the medium is different. Instead of getting a direct mail piece, you're getting a freaking electronic direct mail piece. I mean, it's, yeah. I, God, yeah. it was outstanding. Yeah, yeah. There's no magic to it. What I was thinking then is no. that it's so simple. Like, you can't package this up, what we're talking about right here, and sell it as like a $2,000 product because it's so simple. You need a bit of traffic, a bit of people who have a problem that needs solving, and then you need a way to connect them to your product. You have a product that you need to sell them, and you just need a way to connect them. And the autoresponder is just a way yeah. to connect them. That's it. Yeah. You can't, yeah. that's not a $2,000 product. That's the problem. People want that huge, big solution where really they need to sit down, get a bit of traffic, have something to sell, write a few emails. I think a lot of people think that they have to have a huge email list before they can do any of this stuff. And that is simply not true. Okay. Because when I when I started the Reaver Pro stuff, I mean, granted, we collected a lot of emails over time before we actually launched. That's fine. The boot camp, for example, when I did the first iteration of the boot camp, I had maybe 300 email addresses. And then I launched hmm. to that list. And I got 50 people to sign up. And pay anywhere depending on what webinar they went to. And I had different price points to see what worked and what didn't work. It was low as $47 and as high as $297. And so I got people people all over the board that were paying. I think the sweet spot happens to be right around $97 is where most people seem to be comfortable with. So here was a list. I just simply put up a landing page, collected email addresses, Google AdWords, had 300 emails, had a webinar – Hey, join me on on this particular day. I'm going to talk. I'm going to go in depth, talk 60 minutes about this and open up to a question and answer session. And when uh, it was over with, I opened it and people started joining. And then after so many days, I closed it down. And now, you know, I'm building the second phase of the email list. And I think I got maybe and I just started the email list a few weeks ago. So it's maybe around 100 people or so right now. And I'll launch another webinar, Hmm. invite everybody to join, get all the details and then I'll open it up for three days, and then I'll close it down again. Yeah, yeah. And it's not going to stop me from collecting emails or pimping the product. Yeah, So, yeah. But the icing on the cake to make more people convert, I believe, will be the autoresponder. Yeah. And maybe I won't implement it during this phase, but it will definitely be implemented in the next one. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, one thing I wanted to ask is just to play devil's advocate for a second is a lot of people, you know, face really stiff competition. They're in markets where, you know, it's very, very competitive. So how much do you think, I don't know your market with the, all this tech stuff where you're dropping all this, you know, industry jargon. Like, are you the only guy in this industry offering this kind of stuff? How much is that contributing to the sales, to the success? No, there are there are other people out there. In fact, he's a friend but he's, he's also a competitor because he has a similar product. If you The name of the group is Hack5, H-A-K-5. They have an internet TV show that talks about you know hacking and all that kind of stuff. So they have a huge, huge following. Now, if you go to their store, the Hack Shop, which I think is H-A-K-S-H-O-P, they sell all kinds of devices like ours, multi-purpose devices. Now, here's the kicker. I get a lot of emails saying, why should I buy your Reaver Pro over the Hack Shop's Wi-Fi Pineapple. Okay. And I'm honest with them. I say the Pineapple is great if you want a device that does multi-purpose things. If you want it to do man-in-the-middle attacks, if you want it to break WEP, if you want to break WPA, it even has our open-source version of Reaver built into it. Okay. If you need a multi-purpose device that does multiple things and has battery support and all that kind of stuff, then go with that device. But if you ha- want a single-purpose device that goes after Wi-Fi-protected setup which is on most modern APs today, than buy our product. People are like, wow, thanks for the honesty. Really appreciate that. I just placed my order with you. And I am customer support, unfortunately. (laughs) So (laughs) when people email me with a problem, I'm the one that replies. But what I have heard throughout the months is that their platform, my competition's platform, is a little more unstable than ours. So it may have a tendency to crash or not function as properly. And their customer support literally sucks. People will email them and may not hear anything back within weeks. Right. So what you have there, what I'm seeing is that you have just a killer USP. You know exactly who you are. You know exactly what part of the market you're serving and what sort of person is going to buy your product. Yes. So that's a killer thing. It's like when someone's going to set up their order response, someone's going to go and do their marketing, that they need to get this shit worked out where like, who are they? Like exactly who's their prospect? Who are they trying to talk to? And then exactly why is their product different to everything else out there? Why should people buy theirs? Than the other stuff, because yep. if they can, if they can iron out those kinks, everything else will kind of flow very, you know, naturally. And they can have easy answers to all these questions. Yeah. Now, let me caveat what you just said by saying I agree with everything you just said. Yeah. But I did not have all that information before I launched Reaver Pro. I didn't know they had an inferior product. I didn't know that it was unstable. But that didn't stop me from just getting out there and yeah. putting the autoresponder together. Yeah. Now, in light of this feedback that I've been getting for this past six months is going into my waffling on you know putting together the current autoresponder because I want to make sure I address the most common complaints that the competitor has and be able to say why mine is better. So I'll write it and then I'll look at it and let it rest for a day, come back and say, eh, I need to rewrite that. And I just need to stick with it and just pull the trigger and do it like I did the last time. Yeah. Now, the bad part is I got a little knowledge. I kind of know how it should work. Yeah. And now I'm waffling, and think, you know, trying to tweak it too much. And I got to slap myself and get out of that and just pull the trigger and just do it. Yeah, you're thinking too much. I've heard of, you know, stories, you know, they get uh, the successful early and then it becomes a lot harder the second time because they question, can I live up to, can I, can I get the same results that I just got? And Yeah. <laughs> how long are your emails? How long are they? Yeah. Well, they're short. Compared to yours, yeah. mine are short. You can pull up the email and you can probably read it within six, seven lines or so. So they're very short, very quick to the point. Now, the autoresponder series that I'm working on now is going to be a little bit longer. But when I do my broadcasts and stuff, it's usually, hey, here's a link to XYZ or here's a new new video I released on Reaver Pro on how to add a Yagi antenna or you know how to set up some certain configuration. So I do a lot of broadcasting to the group just to keep it fresh so there's interesting stuff and I don't end up in the spam box or the promotions tab. And most recently with the boot camp, I sent out an email that simply said, now that you've been through the boot camp, can I get your feedback? Yeah. And I think I've had like a 75% open rate on that email. Damn near everybody responded with some very, very valuable feedback that most of it I plan to implement in in the near term, which is great because now I'm no longer sitting, you know, I don't have to fear going to their spam box or to the promotions tab because now they've clicked on the link, they've responded to me. But I mean, the numbers work. We're making good money. Profit margins are usually around the 20% plus area. Do we want to sell it off 
because it's a turnkey system right now. Hmm. Do we want to sell it off or do we want to expand the product line and whatnot? So I don't know. It's, it's a decision we have to come to grips with how much more time we want to put into it or where we want to drive it. Very cool. Very cool. Let's wrap it up around here. Before we go, though, if anyone wanted to email you and talk to you more, ask you a bit a few questions about email, do you mind if they get in touch? Or? No, not at all. I mean, I love helping people out. I mean, I've been to a couple of different networking events where I've talked about my methodology, okay. about how I go about testing ideas before you even put money into it. Yeah. And it's our little process, our little funnel that deals everything with you know, setting up the AdWords account, setting up the landing page, setting up the autoresponders, questioning the people, and deciding whether or not that there's a market out there for it. So I've kind of put together this little funnel that I go around locally talking about other businesses, about how they can test their, whether it's a physical product, an online product, or maybe a class that they want to teach, how you can test it out without spending a lot of money and going down a rabbit hole that you can't get out of. So okay. yeah, they can contact me. I'll give you my personal email address. Sure. It's Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, that's T like in tango, E-R-R-Y dot Dunlap, D-U-N-L-A-P, okay. at gmail.com. At gmail.com, perfect. I'll have one of those tricky links to that in the show notes. You know what I do, Terry, on you're a hacker, yep. you know what I mean? Terry dot Dunlap <laughs> with a little like A-T for at, so, yep. uh, so they can't scrape it, but that'll be in the show notes yep. at the mcmethod.com if the listener wants to get checked out out there. Terry, thanks for coming on to share your story. No problem. Anytime, man. Keep up the outstanding work. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you want to discover more insider tips, tricks, and secrets about driving sales with email marketing, sign up for daily email tips from the autoresponder guy. Go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Sign up, confirm your email address, and I'll send you daily emails on how to improve your email marketing and make more sales via email. You'll find out why open rates don't matter and the seven-letter word that underlies all effective marketing and much more.